Hey guys, we are here with another video from my creative year. And like Lisa Swank and her video, I am going to talk about color mixing and creating a muted palette. If you haven't seen Lisa's video yet, um, we do have a file with all the video links in it for this year, but I will also link it in the post with this video, which is going up on Facebook. It will be unlisted on YouTube. If you have found this on YouTube and you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a Facebook art group. It's called My Creative Year. All of the instructions, posts, daily word prompts for My Creative Year um, are over there. Uh, and explanations, the link for the group is in the video description, so you can join there. Anyway, um, this is my gouache palette. This is, these are M. Graham gouaches. And I was gifted a basic set, um, blue, red, yellow, white, and black. And I thought all along this month, last month we played with these colors and mixing them and see when we, what we could come up with. And I've thought all along um, that how interesting would it be if we took these colors and created some sort of muted pastel colors to accompany these, uh, pre-mixed them and put them in some more pans and added to this with just what we have rather than buying more tubes of paint. Now, Lisa and I evidently had the same idea, She's, but she's doing it um, custom mixed acrylic paints. So I want you to go watch her video. I wanted to all along do, um, some kind of watercolory thing and then I thought wait why don't we work with the gouaches because I kind of want an opaque sorry people my, my friends are chatting um I kind of wanted an opaque pastel muted selection of colors that I could put with these so I thought why don't we use that gouache set and why don't we make some colors so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and we are going to add to this little set of watercolors here. Uh, I'm sorry, gouache paints here. I've got six half pans and I need a plate. Hang on. I knew my plate was around here somewhere. We're probably going to need some baby wipes. I've got a little metal spatula tool and we are ready to go. All right. So on Pinterest, I created a Pinterest board for muted colors, and um, it is filled with different muted color palettes um, and inspirational images, and I'm gonna use that um, for inspiration on the colors that we're gonna create here. Um, muted colors, again, are grayed out colors. Uh, I, in our first video of the month where I announced what we were doing for the month. Um, I gave you the definition for um, muted colors, which I'll insert a text frame right about here. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start with one. We're gonna do one at a time and I'm going to put some a, a decent sized blob of white gouache in the half pan. And then see we need we need just we're going to just leave all of them open for the moment. Normally I don't do that with my paints, but um, we're going to do that with these. So when you're doing this, remember a little bit will go a long way. That one doesn't want to open. You can always add more, but you can't take it back. So just do a little bit at a time. Get all the tubes open, there we go. And we're going to get a teeny tiny brush and a scrap of paper. To test the colors on. Okay. Okay. So 
I'm gonna shoot for, I've got my iPad right here because it's got that Pinterest board on it. I'm gonna shoot for, to start with anyway, a pastel grayed out sort of peachy color. So I'm gonna add some yellow. And I'm actually gonna, that's why I got this metal tool out. I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Oops. And a tiny bit of black. These are M Graham paints, so they're very pigmented and a little bit goes a long way. So let's see what happens. Again, we're shooting for a grayed out peachy, muted peachy color. I don't know if that's what we're gonna get, but it might be. It's in the right direction, but it doesn't have enough of the yellow and red in it by any stretch. So let's put some more. Uh, not quite. I do think we need a little bit more black. Mix it up well. Not quite, and no matter what color you're going for, just do this a little bit at a time. It can be a little bit tedious, granted. But again, you can always add more. You just can't take it back if you put too much. Close, not quite. I'm shooting for something that's a little peachier and not so flesh tony. That might be way too much red. That's closer. Yeah. Getting there. A little bit more red. Again, I'm shooting for sort of a muted pastel palette to add to my gouache colors. I think what it needs is a teeny tiny bit of blue. Uh, 
have this feeling. I had to tell my iPad to stop turning off. Remember, we grayed out the color by just adding like literally like a couple drops of black. Made it a pastel shade by adding a whole bunch of titanium white at the start. I'm getting there. Let's see. I think that's a good color. It's not an exact match to what I was going for, but let's see what it looks like on paper. Let's make sure it's mixed up all the way. Now these are watercolor gouache, so they will dry down and then be able to be reconstituted like any other watercolor paint. I should probably have some water. We are playing with watercolor, hang on. Okay. Get our brush wet. Let's see what this color looks like on paper. It's more rosy than I was going for, but actually that's not bad. Okay, again, it's more rosy than I was initially shooting for, but I think inspired by the color palette over in Pinterest, I think it's a good color. It's definitely a muted pink. Uh, grayed out pink and so I'm pretty happy with it. I'll wipe off the little pan as much as we can. Put that up there. Let's shoot for a muted yellow golden tone. Let's see what happens. Um, there. I'll grab another pan. Put in some more titanium white. Put in some yellow and a little bit of black. We'll start with that and see what happens. Mm 
need a lot more yellow. Maybe a little touch of red. Teeny, teeny, tiny bit. We'll just add a little bit and see what happens. It's actually not a bad color. Again, it's not exactly what I was shooting for. I could put some more red in that. I think I'll put a little bit more red. Actually, again, not a bad color. Inspired by the color palette, I think that's pretty good. It's, again, not an exact match, but I think I'm good with it. This is what it looks like on the paper. Definitely a muted golden yellow color, which once, like this color, once you get it wet and spread it out, it's very much closer to the color palette I'm looking at off on Pinterest. So that's good. All right. Let's shoot for a blue. So again, we're gonna start with a blob of white, some blue. Judging by the two that we've done already, I'll add more blue than I think I need. A little bit of black. And I think I'm gonna need a tiny little bit of yellow. Now this might turn it green, but we'll find out. That's okay, because I need to do a green too. Hopefully during editing I've zoomed in enough for you all. Yeah, that's a good color. Once I got that one right the first time. That's a really good color. So let's see what that looks like on our paper. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right the first time. And it's even closer when you thin it out with the water. Yep. Okay. Next up, let's grab a fresh baby wipe. And let's do a green. Now these palettes have a lot of muted greens on them, so I'm going to I'm gonna try mixing one, we'll see what um, comes up. I also wanna do a purple and a brown. Maybe an orange, we'll see. Definitely a purple and a brown. Okay, so let's do, again, start with our blob of white. I'm gonna put in some blue. Some yellow. More than in the last one and a little bit of black. Now I want, might want a green that's more on the yellow side, so I might need to add more, a lot more yellow. We'll see. I think that's too blue. Again, sorry about the pings in the background. My friends are, I have Facebook open on the computer behind me and they're chatting. 
I think I want a little bit more yellow in there, not too much. It's looking, I think it's going to look nice with the other um, colors. Yeah, that was good. All right, let's again do a swatch. Yeah, look at that, that's nice. Okay. Now I have two more pans. I wanted to do a brown and a purple. Okay, so let's do the purple first because that's gonna be the easier color. <clears throat> so again, a blob of white. Some blue. Some red and a little bit of black. Now you could just go buy these colors. Of course you could. Um, probably every manufacturer on the planet has muted tones of their paint colors whether it's a acrylic paint manufacturer, watercolor, gouache, it doesn't matter. M. Graham, Daniel Smith, PBO, Golden. But to right now in um, the current times when we're not supposed to be leaving the house. Um, and besides that, we all have art rooms full of supplies. Um, let's use what we have and let's have fun doing it. This way you can make your own unique colors. And I like the idea of the, that's way too blue, of doing um, gouaches because um, you don't have to worry about them drying out and not being usable anymore. They can dry out and you just re-wet them. If you're gonna do this with acrylic paints, um, and I haven't watched all of Lisa's video yet, but if you're going to do this with acrylic paints, which you definitely could, this pan is really full. Um, get some little small jars that you've uh, washed out from, I don't know, jelly or, or some kind of sauce. Or if you do Home Chef like we do, lots of times some of the ingredients come in small plastic tight sealing jars. And I save them and use them for mixing up custom acrylic colors and storing it in the jar. I do put a little bit of slow dry medium in the acrylic paint and a little bit of water, and that helps it keep it from getting too thick too fast. Just FYI, that's my tip. Yeah, that's a good color, okay. It looks too blue when it's over here, but if you put it over here, I think it's a pretty good color. Let's mix that just a little bit. I see a blob of white paint. Okay, let's swatch that and see what we think. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at the color change when you get it wet. Nice. Okay, so we've got a purple. Last up, brown. <sighs> so we're gonna start with the white. I'm going to put a little bit less this time because we're going to have to put all of the other colors in here. So um, usually if you mix colors on the opposite side of the color wheel, as Lisa discusses in her video, um, like purple and what's on the other side, orange, you get brown. In this case, we have primary color. So we're going to put some, hopefully equal amounts of all three in here and a little bit of black, and then we'll see what happens. I would like sort of an earthy, muted brown color, but I don't know if that's what we're gonna get. Oh, maybe. It's a gray, it's a gray brown, but that's kind of what we wanted. Let's see, I might want it a little bit more on the red side than the blue side. It's a little bit on the blue side. 
So let's add some more red. And a little bit more yellow. You just have to keep adding and playing with it until you get the right shade that you're looking for. And again, I'm looking at the Pinterest board for inspiration. I'm not looking to copy the colors I see exactly. That might work. Oh yeah, look at that. So there we go, there's our new six custom gouache paint colors. I'll be bringing you a, another video before the end of the month where we paint something with these colors. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get them into my little tin and I am gonna make a color key for the tin, a little piece of paper that has all the colors in it, including the primaries and these six muted pastel shades. And um, then we'll see where we go from there. I would love to see what you're doing. Are you making yourself a custom muted palette? Are you using the idea of muted colors to um, do some slow stitching? If you haven't followed me on social media, then you don't know that I've used the idea of muted colors to do some slow stitching and other projects. So even if you're not in the mood to paint, if you're drawing or you're sewing or you're stitching, try to incorporate some muted colors into what you're doing with your work. And do share in the group. We would love to see what you're doing. Uh, that's it for right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because you are watching this on YouTube, even though it's unlisted. And um, there's ways to support the free content in the Facebook group and here on YouTube in the video description. We also have some ways over in the Facebook group, so check them out. If you can't find them or you're unsure, do ask. Lots of the teachers have Etsy stores or something else. And um, that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.